Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part two of the Pro Tools First Pro course. In this part, I'm gonna show you how to download and install Pro Tools First. I'll also be going over the system requirements that you'll need to get it working on your system. I'll be demonstrating on Windows 10, but it's a similar process on other operating systems, and I will show you where you can find the installers for those versions too. So let's get started. So first of all, you wanna be heading to avid.com forward slash pro dash tools. So can see the link up here let's make it a bit bigger and it will take you to the Pro Tools website. Please note that Pro Tools First is now discontinued for new users who don't yet have a license but this course does apply if you're learning the full version of Pro Tools as well as it works almost identically. If you already have an Avid account with a Pro Tools First license that you might have gotten with your audio interface you can log in and download the software from my.avid.com forward slash products hash my products. If you don't have a Pro Tools First license, you can download the free 30 day trial of the full version of Pro Tools on the website on screen and follow along with this course. Practically everything that you'll learn in this course still applies. Pro Tools just has more features and plugins. So just follow this video, but click on free trial under Pro Tools instead to get started. So you're gonna click download under Pro Tools First and then it's going to ask you to make an account or sign in if you've already got one. Also gives you a link to the minimum system requirements. Let's open that in a new tab and have a look at those. Because you've got to make sure it's going to work on your PC. It's not a particularly uh, intensive program, the, the free version anyway, but, but it does use more system uh, memory and, and CPU than Audacity or, or some other smaller programs. So you're looking at Windows 10 or higher, ideally, uh, i5 processor, four gig of RAM, but eight gig recommended, uh, 15 gig of, of disk space, but you're probably gonna want more for your, uh, your projects. And then Mac, Mojave, um, minimum uh, operating system. Again, same with the, with the processor and the RAM and everything. So we're all fine with that. Let's go back to the downloads. So if you don't already have an account, you can create an account here. I'm just gonna make a dummy account so you can see the full process. And then submit that. And now you also need an iLock account. If you're not sure what iLock is, it's a, a licensing system um, that you can add all sorts of digital audio products to. So plugins and things as well, you'd, you'd need, most of them need an iLock account and Avid use it too. So let's just create a new iLock account using the same email and password as the Avid Master account. If you do have an iLock account already, of course, you can just link your existing iLock ID. Then it's just gonna ask you a couple of things. Let's just say we use Pro Tools, uh, educational projects, okay. And then you can get an email to get your download links to the software. Right, so they've sent me two emails now. First is just showing us that the account has been created and, and, and the details um, for iLock. And then the second email gives us the download links. So we're on Windows, but you've got your Mac download link. So I'm just gonna open that Windows link and just click it. And then we've got quite a large download. I don't know why it's a whole gig larger on, on Mac, but Anyway, 2.6 gig, so we're just gonna, don't worry, I won't make you sit through it. Right, so now we've downloaded the zip file, just gonna unzip that, we'll extract that, which is gonna take another few minutes. And now we've got that all downloaded and exported, it's gonna go to the setup exe, or if you're on Mac, it will be a different format, but same process. Um, so we've got license support, and that's, this is what it's installing. The cloud client as well, because you can save your files on the cloud. Um, and Avid Link, it's all, all works. It's all sort of cloud-based um, and licensing stuff. There may be a couple of parts of the installation process where the screen just sort of, it just looks like there's nothing happening. Um, it's just while it's loading up the next stage of the install wizard, here we go. So now it's time to actually install Pro Tools first. So just click next, you've got license agreement as you'd expect, then click install and here we go. So the whole process does take a little bit longer than, than you might expect from some 
uh, some software like Audacity, but it's because it's got a lot of plugins um, with, you know, you've got Expand 2, for example, that's a plugin that has virtual instruments. So it's installing samples, audio samples and things. So it's a more robust software. So it does take that little bit longer, but it is worth it. And now it's finally finished. So it does ask you to uh, restart your system with some smaller bits of software. I might not bother, but for Pro Tools, uh, I would advise giving your system a restart before launching it. And then when you're back on, you should see Pro Tools first on your desktop, or you can search it in your applications menu. Let's just double click that and make sure it's all working properly. And then once it's loaded up, it's gonna ask you to sign in to your Avid account. And then it's gonna start loading all the plugins. You'll see names of the plugins popping up here in just a minute. And you can see I'm on version 2021, 7.0. Uh, that's the latest version of time recording. They do, um, it, it just gets reiterated, updated constantly throughout the year now. It used to be the case that it would be one version per year. So Pro Tools 6, Pro Tools 7, but even with the main version of Pro Tools now, they name it after the year and then and then the version release that is normally every month or two uh, there's there'll be some update then it's going to ask you if you want to send diagnostic data so you can click yes or no and then it's going to open your dashboard that has your projects in so this will display projects that have been saved to your pro tools uh, your avid cloud and and any local projects as well so let's just create a new session um, test session. This is going to create a new project, basically in Pro Tools, where you where you'd be working. So, um, well, let's let's call it Song One, just so we've got an idea. So you can save up to three projects in the cloud, um, and you can create things from templates. We'll go into that later on, but we're just going to create a blank session. Hit create. And yep, so it loads up our windows. We've got the edit window here and the mix window, it's loaded up as well. So that's all working, which is great. And you can you can hit play. If you've got an audio interface installed, you'll be able to hit play and you'll see that moving. If you haven't got one installed yet, um, we're gonna be going over that in the next part. And one last thing I would check is that your plugins are installed correctly. So if you go to track and, and click new, and just click create. We'll be going over what this is exactly in later parts of the, the course. But then you've got a, an audio track here and where you see inserts there, just click one of these blank gray boxes underneath, go down to plugin and just look at these menus and make sure you've got something in all of these menus. It's just the, the plugins, uh, the effects and things that are packaged with Pro Tools first, you wanna make sure they've installed correctly. If not, you might wanna try uh, reinstalling or contacting Avid. Now that Pro Tools First is all installed and ready, it's time to get your audio interface set up which, so you can record and, and play back, which is what we'll be going over in part three. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next part and let me know in the comments section below, are you new to Pro Tools or have you used a version of Pro Tools before? And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part three.